It's mom and pop video shop. Welcome back, or for the first time, to mom and pop video shop. I'm Joel. I'm Tyson. Yes, and we are here today to discuss a classic, in my opinion, and it's definitely probably a minority, minority opinion amongst many. A, manure, a minority? A, a minority. A manure itty opinion. Opinions are like assholes, honey. Give me one more hand. I'll see if I can guess it. You will never, ever pass this course. It was shot in Jamaica. He's going to be like saying, Surfer the Rainbow or something? No. In Jamaica? <laughs> is it, it, yes, it doesn't take place in Jamaica, but it was shot in Jamaica. Um, it has, I'll give you this, Jill Sholin, the wonderful and lovely star of Stepfather and cutting class with Brad Pitt. I have a clue. Okay. Buy a bag. Go home in a box. Buy a bag. Go home in a box. I don't know if I've seen this. You've never seen that? You don't know that tagline? That tagline's like legendary. Popcorn! Oh, of course. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> Popcorn. I believe it's 1990. Because I know they shot in 89. This is another one that I have not seen near as many times as you have. Yeah, no, I love this movie. A have lot. you got a popcorn? Yeah, we, uh, there is. Popcorn yeah, the popcorn behind there. us. Yeah. Whoa, 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 caught it. <laughs> hey, oh. Hey, oh. Oops. Clumsy, clumsy hippos. So, yeah, so popcorn, buy a bag, go home in a box. I think that is literally, other than in space, no one can hear you scream. That's it's pretty one good of my all time yeah. favorite taglines. I remember being a kid and whenever it would come on, like the TV spot, because it never played anywhere near me and it bombed, if memory serves. But yet, that tagline just stuck in my head. Luckily, forever. I've seen this like probably within the last year, but this is another one that was a couple episodes ago. We were yes. talking about uh, movies that I feel bad, like I don't deserve to talk about because i haven't seen them enough yeah i, I think maybe twice I've seen I, I don't know i don't know if it's but a, i do remember more about it because i saw it more recently than night of the creeps yes yeah yeah so we covered this is the third one we covered on the headline into monsters with mm -hmm. uh, ashley and raul and uh, i know ashley's a massive fan actually the whole episode was a in celebration of ashley's birthday and so she goes i want to cover these three movies and i'm so blessed that she goes joel that's who's dorky enough to want to recover all these. And when she asked you, I was like, oh, yes, please. And, and because you're a good friend, I'm sure you'll put the links to those episodes oh, on absolutely. their channel. Oh, absolutely. 100%. In the, yep. In the description and, below. Yeah. Dr. Giggles, Night of the Creeps, and Popcorn were the three movies we covered. I was happy. And we go deep dive in all of them. But for the purposes of this review, I am going to read the uh, in <coughs> the insert that they put in the... That's in, a this, long one, yeah. Dude, and, uh, That's what yeah, she said. Yeah. <laughs> the synops, that were synapse. This is the synapse steelbook, dude. I am glad I got this when I did. These things are now not cheap. Read like, the synapse synopsis. I'm going to read the synapse synopsis. Let's see here. Oh, it also has this, like, I'm guessing it's, maybe it's a German, yeah, German, like the German cover. Is read it in German. Um, Guten Tag! <laughs> Peter's going to be so mad at you. Yeah, I, I would do it Swedish, like, for eh, Peter. whatever he's Yeah, even though he, well, he's Danish, technically, but, uh, yes. <laughs> Whatever. Tomato. Peter, Peter doesn't mind when I do that. All right. You say mater, I say mater. That's right. Oh, actually, there's, according to this, a two disc limited steelbook edition, only 3,000 units. What do you think about it? It's quite a few. Like, that's not like, I mean, it's not a billions. Mm, but do you, how many, how many, do you, how, many how many VHSs of the thing do you think were out there back in the day? More than 3,000? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I digress. Yeah, you do. <laughs> what could be scarier than an all-night horror-thon? A group of film students finds out when they stage just such an event at an abandoned movie palace located in Jamaica. In addition to the three features, Mosquito, The Attack of the Amazing Electrified Man, and The Stench, they discover a bizarre short film called The Possessor, whose creator, Lanyard Gates, killed his family and set the theater on fire after its first showing. Maggie, played by Joel Sholin, the stepfather, has been having frightening dreams that seem to be connected to The Possessor. Oh, sorry. The Possessor. Do it right. And as the festival proceeds, the nightmare comes true for her and her friends as they are stalked and slain by a mysterious killer. As Gates survived to continue The Possessor's deadly legacy. And then it goes on about it's a loving homage to 50s and 60s B-movies, etc., etc. And it is. So Popcorn came out 
It was a movie that I think that was shot like in 1989. In Jamaica, though, huh? Yeah, they shot it in Jamaica. Because um, it's not, but it takes no, place in. No, they never like, specifically like say like Cal, like some some nameless California, yeah. Southern California town. Um, it's of like these film students, and they um, the the dad uh, the dad he seems like the dad he's the uh, the, the, the professor, professor. Yeah. is Tony Roberts I believe is the actor and he's one of those guys I think he was in a bunch of Woody Allen right. movies in the 70s he's one of those guys as a kid I always saw because my parents would have things on he was always in those like 70s he's adult the dad. oriented. Right. Yeah, that kind of figure, or yeah. the or the best friend kind of guy, and uh, also is it Ray Walston? Wasn't he that my favorite Martian guy? I'm pretty sure he's in, so. he's got a small part in this. Yeah. Um. Um. Obviously, Joe Sholin is in this. Uh, I'm gonna. Kick- I definitely remember more details about the plot than the cast. Yes. So it's it's got a lot of great people in it. Uh, the uh, killer, who I will not reveal as to who they are, obviously, because it is a mystery. It's it's a it's kind of like a pre-scream slasher mystery type of thing. Mm-hmm. I think I know the twist. Yeah, but I will say I love the makeup design yes. of that character. Yeah. Like I, that, the fact that they never made any like even direct to video sequels. I know it didn't do well, but I feel like that character could have gone on to be like an ongoing killer. And isn't there uh, just so I've got the right movie? Um, isn't there one of the gimmicks is like the the William Castle thing where They've got things swinging yes, in. Yeah, because it was during the horathon. And, yeah. yeah, and they play yes. up. They play yes. with that. Yeah, yeah, like they do that during Electrified Man. They've like rigged up the seats to yeah. shock people, a la the Tingler. Yeah. They had the mosquito episode. They're going to have like this giant mosquito fly out. The stench they're releasing, smelly well, toxins into the. This <laughs> falls into another one of our sort of favorite horror sub sub genres, which is horror movies that take place in a movie theater. Oh, yeah. Right? Like demons. Just, demons. Yeah. It's like, yes. Well, and anything that's that. Last that matinee, we were just talking about that. One location yeah. type horror. It just, it's, yes. there's something cool about It's very cool. One that takes place. And this in is a like in a during theater, a horror, and it's, it's like a theater like the one in Demons. It's one of those old school balcony type yep. of theaters. It's just really cool. Um, the poster for this thing, iconic, iconic, and that's it. I remember the poster. Oh, yeah. everyone remembers. The I think I was. I, I don't think I saw this as a kid. I think I was an adult when I saw this. Really? Yeah. yeah. And I feel okay. Look, it's not a perfect movie. It's got its problems. You could see that it was like edited. I know Alan Ormsby. They go. Whoa, wait, the cause attacking. What the hell was that? I didn't uh, touch it. I- <laughs> <laughs> pushing from the inside. Uh, Alan Ormsby, who was involved with like Bob Clark's early stuff. You wait, you're right. Children shouldn't right. play with dead things. Death dreams. Uh, the, is that the soundtrack guy? No, he was uh, the writer producer for a lot of, I think we were co-writer and he worked with, and he uh, de- deranged. Bob Clark had the same guy that did all his music too, though. Right? Yeah. Carl Zitterer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Zitterer. Sorry. Uh, and that's no, okay. Um, but the, uh, but also and sorry to Rick too, cause I'm sure him. He knew exactly. Um, yeah, probably. Um, the uh, no, but it's deranged, right? Isn't that the one with uh, uh, Roberts Blossom as the Ed Gein type character? Was one of Ted uh, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. think that I think that was on me as well. It was involved. I in remember that. the movie, but again, I can't tell you the casting crew. Well, here's the thing: it always us would do like all the effects and stuff. Too, he has a book about makeup effects uh, that he wrote. Uh, that actually, I have around here somewhere, like a really old, crappy used copy of. Um, but popcorn was going to be like his, like thing he really wanted to do and he was so obsessed with the movies that take place within the movie he shot that first apparently and it was taking yeah. so long they fired him and they brought in this other director whose last name was harry have we talked didn't Harrier? i i mean aren't there like full length like features that i don't i haven't watched i watched the extras on this but it's been a yeah. minute since i watched him i remember they go way in depth yes okay and but i do know that he just spent so long for it's like what, what we're gonna use is just clips and it's kind of like matinee remember matinee with john goodman yeah how they do the whole mant thing in your yeah, seat yeah, yeah. now these are three different movies but it's the same general idea um so you get that fun 50s vibe because of course a lot of these movies being made in the late 80s or in the 80s and in the 90s were made by people who grew up yeah in the 50s and 60s so that's why they were incorporating their stuff into it so um but yeah popcorn I, I i don't even know what it is about the movie it just works for me it's gateway horror it's r-rated but i'm telling you i would argue critters is more intense and violent and gory and that um what was the other one we covered not that long ago that was maybe like i know we haven't covered the gate officially but yeah gate is scarier yeah. by a lot like popcorn is r mainly because i think they say two f words in it <laughs> And there is some gore, but it's very, it's not graphic. It's like this movie could have easily been PG-13 to the point where I think it was originally going to be. And they like, oh, no, we probably should make it R because it's a slasher, yeah, you know, right. that kind of thing. But it feels like a PG-13. Well, and to your point, the the makeup of the... the oh, yeah. Poster. It's pretty, uh, yeah. Uh, 
I mean, that's it's, yeah. it's, it's creepy. Yeah, it is creepy. It's nightmare yeah. inducing. Yeah, the uh, the the um, the killer is got yeah that look. It's very it's funny because it's got a Freddy vibe, but it's not Freddy. It doesn't feel like a knockoff of Freddy. It feels like its own thing, which I love. I always think like the burning too. Yeah, yeah, got vibes yeah. of that too. You don't mean that. All right, so popcorn, let us know in the comments. Uh, I, I, I probably should say this first before I go into that. Tape-wise, I'm going to say it. I'm sorry. It's a five taper for me. Uh, I'll say four. Okay. I'm not going to say three. I'll say four because I have seen this a little more recently. recently. And you do and remember again, you did like... Yeah. And I remember specifically that this is another uh, case of that retroactive cinematic nostalgia. And, and yes. For, now, this one... I regret also, not seeing this. And this could have... Right. This movie's a C&D movie for me, yeah. too. This is a cinematic nostalgia disorder movie yeah. where I acknowledge it has its flaws. Had I, I seen I this as a kid yeah. and this been part of my horror DNA yes. as a child, it yeah. would probably be a five taper for me. So that's yes. why I'm going to go with, with four. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's, it's a fun movie. It's, it's got some really cool people you'll recognize from the, from the era. Uh, even though it, it came out in 1990, it still has that late eighties vibe to yeah. it. Um, and just, and just fun. I mean, D Wallace is great in it. And just the, the look and the feel of the theater I and the, D. the Wallace, isn't that too? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, We're she, on a D Wallace role yeah, here. Yeah. Too. She's in the movie. She's sure she's the mother of Joe Sholin's character. You don't say. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. Milf. So uh, let's know in the comments. Popcorn? Seen it? Like it? What do you think? Do you remember those uh, awesome TV spots from back in the day? And did buy a bag, go home in a box, stick in your head to the point where every single time your kids say to you, hey, dad, do you want some popcorn? You have to, in an OCD fashion, respond with that line. Right. Just saying. Or else there'll be like a volcano halfway around the world. Indeed. You know, hey. You don't mess with it. Don't You don't mess with it. Right. On that note, <laughs> until we meet again here in the shop, remember, at Mom and Pops, our love of... Uh, here's a more modern okay. recommendation. Uh, you pulled it off the shelf a while ago, and it ties right into this sub-subs genre. Mm -hmm. The Last Matinee. Never stops. Seriously, folks, you should see it. If you've never seen it, it's fantastic. Uh, and this one is probably not a gateway horror. No, it is not at all. Mom and Pops.